it. I'm looking forward to it. This is the best part of my job. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the next Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you all for coming out this morning. It's great to be back here today. Uh, thank you, John, for your kind introduction. Uh, it really is great to be back here in Oakville, especially here at Local 793 of the International Union of Operating Engineers. It was one of the first places I visited when I became leader, uh, and I got to drive a train, uh, crane then too. Uh, and I know your members continue uh, to do good work building roads and bridges, subways and subdivisions, and so much more. Thank you, Mike, for having me here again. I'm also happy to be here today with Pam and John, your fantastic Liberal candidates in Oakville and Oakville North Burlington, and of course, all the other great members of the strong Liberal team that Pam uh, introduced. I'm looking forward to seeing all of them uh, with me in Ottawa after October 19th. <clears throat> well, my friends, the news about the economy isn't good, and it's getting worse every day. When he's asked about it, when he chooses to answer questions, Stephen Harper's only response is that we need to stick to the status quo. Well, I think it's fair if the Prime Minister is telling Canadians to stay the course, that we take a look at where his course has taken us. It's led to eight consecutive deficits. It's led to two recessions, one of them unique to Canada, where the only country in the G7 currently in recession. We have a Prime Minister who's added more than $150 billion to the national debt and delivered the worst decade of growth since the Great Depression. So you have to ask yourselves, are you really better off today than you were 10 years ago when Stephen Harper became Prime Minister? And we also have to ask ourselves, what is his path forward? It's austerity and cuts. And Tom Mulcair agrees with him. Well, we believe that the economy needs investment, jobs, and growth. <laughs> My friends, the choice in this election is very, very clear. It's between smart investments that create jobs and growth or austerity and cuts that will slow our economy further. Think about it for a moment. The roads we drove here on, the transit we take to work in the morning, the water that comes out of our taps. All of those things are here, not because we paid for them, but because our parents and grandparents thought enough of us to invest in our future. The people who came before us had ambition for us. They knew something that Tom Mulcair and Stephen Harper seem to have forgotten, that optimistic, confident, successful countries invest in their future. I have confidence in the future of this country. I believe in Canadians. I believe in our work ethic. I believe in our ingenuity. I believe in our ability to grow our economy. This is a great country and it deserves better leadership. <clears throat> it's time for real positive change. The kind of change that will turn our economy around and get it growing again. Change that will create jobs and restore economic security to the middle class. Our plan 
will make life better for Canadians. We will raise taxes on the wealthiest 1% so we can cut them for the middle class. We will stop sending Stephen Harper's government checks to millionaires so we can give more to the families who need it. We'll give families better parental leave options and we'll make it easier for families to care for seriously ill loved ones. And that is the first part of our plan. Invest in the middle class, give Canadians the tools they need to grow the economy and build a better country. Today, I want to talk with you all about the next major step in our plan. See, there's been a lot of talk in this campaign about leadership. Let me tell you what I think national economic leadership looks like. It's a strong, clear, ambitious plan to grow the economy. It's doing the hard work to engage provinces, municipalities and Canadians to make that plan happen. That's what our plan for investment, jobs and growth will do. Our plan will be the most significant new investment in our infrastructure in Canadian history. We will invest 60 billion new dollars over 10 years, nearly doubling the current government's planned investment. As we roll out the investment jobs and growth plan, we'll be talking about significant new projects, new ways of financing them. The result will be long-term, stable and predictable funding for provinces, territories and municipalities. Yeah. <clears throat> The plan will focus on three areas that will create economic growth now and make our economy more productive over time. Public transit, social infrastructure and sustainable infrastructure. We need greater investment in public transit. If we want our economy to grow, we need our cities to work. That means we need to build new transit infrastructure, full stop. And there are great plans on the books all across the country. But none of them will happen without a strong federal partner and they need to happen. We need to invest in social infrastructure, in things like affordable housing and childcare. Our communities cannot grow without them. Those same communities cannot be expected to shoulder the costs alone and a responsible federal partner should never expect them to. And finally, we need to build sustainable infrastructure. That means investing in clean energy, but it also means adapting to climate change. The infrastructure we have now, built for us by our parents and grandparents, has served us well, but it was built for a climate that increasingly no longer exists. A changed climate is the toughest legacy that we will hand our kids and our grandkids. We need to give them the tools they'll need to adapt to it. These investments have been put off for far too long. They're vital if we want to grow the economy. But we know it's about more than just that. It's about getting people to work on time and back home to their families at the end of a long day. It's about getting our products to market so our entrepreneurs can grow their companies and create jobs. It's about the places where our families live, work and play. It's about doing for our kids and grandkids what our parents and grandparents did for us. And let's face it, if we've got a better, oppor we've got a better opportunity than they had. Our debt to GDP ratio is low and interest rates have never been lower. On the other hand, we're in a recession and growth has stalled. So now is the time to invest in the projects our country needs and the people who can build them. Let there be no mistake about it. Let there be no mistake about it. National leadership 
and federal investments enabled the prosperity we enjoyed through much of our history. Far-sighted leaders brought Canadians together to build the things our economy needs to grow. The Canadian Pacific Railway, the St. Lawrence Seaway, the Trans-Canada Highway. None of these things would have happened without smart and sustained federal investment. These projects didn't just create economic opportunities. They helped bring Canadians together, coast to coast to coast, community to community. They focused not on where we've been as a country, but on where we're going. Nous avons déjà annoncé plusieurs aspects de notre plan économique. L'allocation canadienne aux familles, qui donne plus aux familles de la classe moyenne. Une baisse d'impôts pour les Canadiens de la classe moyenne. 8 millions de personnes auront plus d'argent dans leur poche. De meilleures prestations pour les aidants naturels et nos anciens combattants. Un nouveau plan pour créer les, les emplois verts de demain et des investissements dans l'éducation des Premières Nations. Alors aujourd'hui, je vous parle d'investissement dans nos infrastructures. Il s'agira du plus important investissement en infrastructure dans l'histoire du Canada. 60 milliards de dollars sur 10 ans, soit presque le double des investissements prévus actuellement par le gouvernement. Notre plan se concentrera principalement sur trois secteurs, le transport collectif, les infrastructures sociales et les infrastructures durables et vertes. De meilleurs réseaux de transport collectif pour que nos villes continuent de croître, plus de logements sociaux et la création d'énergie verte. Le temps est venu pour de grands projets rassembleurs pour le Canada. We need to remember that economic growth is not just about prosperity, it's about building a country that gives everyone a real and fair chance to succeed. This is what our history has taught us, and it's what our future demands of us. If we want to leave a better country to our kids than the one we inherited, we need to act with the same confidence as previous generations. That's what this plan is all about. Le 19 octobre, c'est le temps de changer ensemble. Ce sera le temps d'investir dans la classe moyenne et de créer de la croissance économique. And together, my friends, we will build a better country. Merci beaucoup.